viewers, I am Sanjeev Pandya welcoming you to another episode of the Tax Talk right here on ITV Gold, the show brought to you by Science CPS Services, a full-fledged accounting firm with multiple locations right here in the state of New Jersey. But it doesn't mean that you can't contact them if you're watching our show in the other part of the country. No matter where you are, you can reach Science CPS Services by visiting their website, sciencecpsservices.com, or give them a call, 908-380-6876. In person, over the Zoom, or uh, over the phone consultation is absolutely possible for all your tax matters, whether personal or corporate tax returns. And this weekly show brings you all the latest update and the changes that you need to know right now regarding taxes uh, for the year 2021. And that update and the guidance and uh, information obviously is made possible by Mr. AJ Kumar, CPA and MBA with Science CPA Services with over 25 years of experience. Once again, he's with us. I'd like to welcome him, Mr. AJ Kumar. Welcome to the show. Good to have Thank you, you once again. Thank you, Sanjeev. I appreciate that. All right. And this one is a special episode because we also have a guest that is uh, going to be joining with Mr. AJ Kumar and that person, Mr. Naveen Patak, who is the Chief Operating Officer with Entry, uh, Entry India. Now, what Entry India is all about and what kind of role Mr. Naveen Patak and his company plays when, uh, when a company, when someone wants to open a company here or start a business here in the USA. They basically bridge a gap between the, the people who want to start the company and the CPA uh, who can help them to set up a company here in the USA. Right, AJ Kumar? Is that what exactly Absolutely. what it is? Absolutely. Absolutely, Sanjeevji. So we have our guest, Naveen Pathak, today with us. Naveen Pathak is the COO of Entry India, Entry USA group. We do a lot of business startup. When you are in India, when you are in a foreign country, you have a dream. A lot of these small business owners have a dream to have their own business, own office, own warehouse, a bank account, e-commerce portal in, in America, in USA. America is the land of opportunity. And who is making it all possible? Naveen Patak and his team. So we have Naveen Patak with us today. I thought it's a great idea to have the man himself the legend himself when we are talking about is starting the business uh, from India in the US. So here is Mr. Pathak with us. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Ajay. And thank you, Mr. Pandya, for a lovely introduction. Yes, uh, the opportunities um, are growing and COVID has changed the, you know, the paradigm, the, uh, the level playing field has changed and uh, America is growing leap and bounds. And for the Indian companies, foreign companies, especially from India, with the deeper interest in expanding business to the U.S. market, uh, starting from having their own setup uh, or finding the market sizing here uh, with warehousing, with e-commerce, sales facilitation, and then we bring that all together uh, as a one single team uh, with Ajay uh, as an expert who understands the, the, you know, this, the business setup, how it should be established and how should it run. Uh, taking it to the next level of warehousing, to the next level of e-commerce, and to the next level of sales facilitation. That's what we do, is to help companies find those opportunities and expand further. So, uh, Mr. Patak, first of all, I'd like to welcome you to the show. So you're basically a liaison between the, uh, between the group of individuals who want to start a company, and here you um, introduce them to a person like AJ Kumar, CPA, who can help them the, from the formation part say Laker, Pura Business Establish Tak Aap Help Karte Ho. Connecting businesses with opportunities, that's what, uh, you know, Entry India is all about. Have you seen more and more parties from India uh, want setting up their businesses here in the USA lately? Absolutely. Jab se ye COVID aaya hai, jo buyers hain, retail buyers, consumers hain, uh, big buyers like TJ Maxx, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Macy's, uh, uh, Target. So the mindset of the buyers is changing. See, the trust factor has come a long way here. Uh, uh, you might have seen that there are challenges with the labor force, there are challenges with the logistics, with truckers, with shipping. And now the companies here want to work with the with those suppliers who have their presence here in the U.S. market. Now that makes it very important uh, for these companies who have a deeper interest in expanding the market to establish their presence. And that starts with the first step that they have to take is to form their company. 
Here in the U.S. Here in the U.S. And that's when you contact Mr. A.J. Uh, absolutely. All that's, right. That's Sir, how you the, go ahead and take a lead now. Uh, absolutely. That's how the process is start. As Naveen said, it's very important for a, a small business to show presence in America, in, to show presence that you are a bigger company. A lot of people, a lot of these vendors wouldn't want to work with you as long as you are a foreign company. So having registration in this country, in U.S., is the first step to get to the warehouse, to get to the bank account, to get to the e-commerce, to get to the next step. Your first step is to form the company. So in this episode, we'll talk about the process of forming the company. You do not need to have a social security number. We'll try to cover as much information as possible. We'll try to go through some frequently asked questions that we have seen people asking us lately. But if you have any question, please do not hesitate to call us. Do not hesitate to write back to us. We are here to help you. This episode is all about you. We'll try to give you as much information as possible. So as we are talking about forming the business, so let's start, what are the steps needed to form the business? So as we were discussing earlier, there are three steps that we have to have in any sort of business structure. You have to have an EIN, sort of federal registration, if you look at it from an Indian perspective, sort of a central government registration. So the country, the USA, is divided at two levels, the federal government and the state government. Consider federal government as your central government, and the state government is more of your state government, like in India. So the registrations typically happen first at the federal level, which we call EIN, Employer Identification Number. And then once the EIN is received, we'll do the registration at the state level. It could be any state. Uh, America has 50 states. You can choose and we'll go through the, the mechanism of how do you decide when you are in a foreign country, how do you decide which state you want to choose. So America has 50 states, will we'll help you decide, but that's the second part of the registration. The third part of the registration is the tax and the labor registration. Tax registration depends on the type of business you are. Let's say if you are in, in retail, you may have the sales tax registration. If you are selling liquor, you may have the liquor registration. So the tax registration and the labor registration depends on the type of business and if you are going to have employees in this country. But the first step is to forming the business in this country. Anything else you want to add, Naveen? Well, yes. Uh, you know, now let's take on the assumption that uh, I'm an exporter. I sell products, and I want to launch those products in the U.S. market. And the first question that appears in my mind is that, of course, I understand that U.S. allows a foreign national to open up a company here. What should be the structure of my company? How should I choose that structure and why? That's a great question. So the U.S. government allows five types of structure here. Right from the proprietorship, partnership, LLC, S Corp and C Corp. If you search on the ITV videos, you will see a separate episode that we had for our local US population on all the five types of businesses that the US government allows. The foreigner, India population, is allowed two of these structures. You can have either an LLC, limited liability company, or a C corporation. Please don't get confused, a corporation in US is of two types. Either it could be S as in a small corporation or C as in Charlie, C corporation. The US government allows either an LLC or a C corporation to be formed by the foreign individuals. Oh, that's wonderful. So, um, uh, you see, when I form a company and when I do, I see most of these companies coming from India, they do an online search, um, AJ. And, and I have found it many, many times. They look for, when they do, do a Google search, they find Delaware LLC, Wyoming LLC, single member LLC. So the question that, that, that I would love to ask you here is that, what makes the foundation of my company strong on my long-term perspective of goals in US? How should I look at that? Uh, absolutely. So uh, again, the US government is allowing two types of structure, LLC or a C corporation for a foreigner. So if you are in a business where you don't expect to make a lot of money immediately, say for example, a real estate investment. If somebody is trying to make a real estate investment in this country, forming an LLC is a great idea for them. If you are looking for funding from the US, if you are looking for the US investor, if you are looking for crowdfunding, then C corporation may be better option in the long run. If you are looking for a long-term objective, typically, 
people prefer C corporation over an LLC. So C corporation pays taxes at the entity level. So the individual from the India from a foreign country, they don't have to be filing the taxes in US unless there is a dividend distribution. So a C corporation typically makes a lot of sense. As you mentioned, Delaware is a typically a most advertised uh, state as far as the business startup is concerned. Also most convenient for LLC, most popular also. Even the companies, even the individuals here in the USA prefer to file you know, in, in the Delaware. And the second, I, be, I believe, Nevada. Well, Nevada. Tax friendly. Uh, absolutely. And Texas or yes. uh, Delaware, they're mm. all good states. So let's take a step back. Let's try to understand uh, why some people prefer some states over other states. So a Delaware state is the state where you have uh, the name of the owners are not disclosed as a part of the formation. You can form a company in Delaware uh, and without disclosing who are the owners, directors, trustees of this organization or this company. So if you have a company and you don't want your partners, your competitors, your friends, your family, your anybody to find out who is actually the owner of the company, Delaware, Nevada, and these are, there are five states that will allow you to do it, then those are the states you have to form the company. The perception that Delaware is any cheaper to form is not true. Delaware is not a cheaper state to be formed. Delaware has the state taxes, Delaware has the corporate taxes, and doing business with Delaware is not any easier than any other state. Please remember, there are 50 states in this country. A state makes revenue based on all these businesses that are registered over there. If your business is registered in New Jersey, you have to pay certain taxes in New Jersey. You have to have the payroll, you have to have the sales tax, you have to have certain taxes in the state of New Jersey. If Delaware was clearly the winner or the only state where everybody preferred, the other 49 states will be out of business. I mean, all these states are in the business to serve the businesses. So a Delaware is great and there are five states where the owner's information is not listed. Delaware is also good if you have a high risk business. If you have a business where the potential for being sued is higher. In chapter seven under liquidation in Delaware, the judge makes the decision, not the jury. Um, Mr. Patak, I'd like you to take over with it now. Yes, uh, okay, AJ, so as you mentioned that, uh, you know, Delaware is one of the options, but, but it, it is not the only option. So let me ask you, what state should I select as an exporter from India for the formation of my company in the U.S.? Uh, absolutely. That's a great question. Now, you see where you have the nexus, where exactly the business, business is going to be conducted. So let's say if you form a company in Delaware and then you have an office in New York, what's going to happen at the end of the year, you have to file the taxes in Delaware as well as in New York because you have the nexus with New York. Why not form the company in the state of New York only so you don't have to file the taxes in Delaware. So wherever you have the nexus, wherever you have the relationship, where you have the branch office, where the revenue is going to come from, where you have the payroll, where you have the employee, where you have the warehouse, there are various ways a nexus can be created. You need to see where exactly my business is going to be conducted. And if you have a situation where uh, I'm doing it from India. It's a search engine optimization. There is no office. I don't have a nexus with any other state. Then you find out what's the address. You will need an address, not a PO box. You will need an actual address to form a company where you have the address. A lot of companies will provide you their address to form the company. I understand Entry India, Entry USA will provide address in New Jersey just because they have the offices in New Jersey. That means you can form the company in New Jersey and you don't have to pay for the address service. You will need an agent in any state, in one of the state. Entry India, Entry USA can provide the agent service. So in that case, New Jersey becomes a choice only because you get the free address and free agent service, which can cost hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars, if you have to buy it yourself in a different state. Wonderful. So you said about Nexus. What if I ask you that I am an e-commerce company with a warehouse in North Carolina. Now my buyers can be all over the U.S. Now how should I select that state? Well, in that case, you know for a fact that your warehouse is North Carolina. That's where we'll start. We start as a home state in North Carolina. We'll have the businesses started in North Carolina. You can have the shipment anywhere as long as you don't have the offices in those states. You'd, you have no obligation to be having the 
registration in those states. But let's say uh, I have a large customer in New Jersey and I have to put one person in New Jersey as well to serve that customer. In that case, I'm creating a nexus for my company in New Jersey as well. In that case, you will have to do the business registration in the New Jersey. It's very, very common for the large corporations to have registrations in multiple states. It's not that you have the registration in one state and you cannot have registration in any other state. It's, it's quite common, especially for the IT consulting companies where you have the, the, the body placement service, where you have the employees placed in all different client sites. It's very, very common to have the registration in multiple states in these days. Wonderful. Now, since we have covered what state, now I know as an exporter what state will be more useful for me. I'm ready to, to, to open up a company. How long would it take before my company get registered? Uh, absolutely. So if it's a domestic company, and we define domestic company if you have a domestic partner who owns at least 5% of the company. In that case, we can have your business registered sort of immediately in one to three business days, depending on the state to state. Some states allow the registration online. So in that case, you can get the registration within 24 hours. Then there are some states where you have the registration uh, file submitted. It takes a couple of days, few days to get the registration. Say for example, California takes few days. New York can get it done on the same day. New Jersey is the same day. Rhode Island takes two weeks. But relatively shorter amount of time if you have a domestic partner. If you do not have a domestic partner, i.e. the company is owned 100% by a foreigner or the Indian company or the Indian individuals. In that case, it can take four to six weeks to register the company because the EIN, the federal registration takes a little longer if you have a 100% foreign company. Wonderful. Okay, so now I'm doing business and I'm generating revenue. My next question is transfer of that profit or money or my income from here to India. That's great. That's great. Absolutely. That's where you want to reach. Everybody has this dream. Okay, fine. After doing all this hard work, after registering the business, investing so much money, so much effort, so much resources, what now? Can I ever get this money back or not? There are two ways you can get this money back. First way, cost of goods sold or the consulting service. So you are providing the services. Even though the business is registered in US, all the services, all the shipment is actually sent from India. If it's a uh, retail business, you can build the cost as a shipment cost and then the US company can pay the India company as a subcontractor and then it comes as a cost of goods sold. It becomes as a deductible expense for the US company. That's one way. The second potential way is profit distribution or you can have the dividend distribution after paying the taxes which is computed on net income. And the typical question I mean we are asked is how much is the tax? What's the percentage over there? How much do I have to budget for it? Please understand in this country the tax is a factor of net income. Let's say if your revenue is $100 you decide, it's your business, how much is the cost of goods sold. And let's say in your business, the cost of goods sold is $90. Then the tax you are paying is only on $10. But you could choose to make the cost of goods good sold as $99. Because it's you are deciding how much services you are providing to the US service. You have certain controls on the US side. You have certain controls on the India side. There has to be a transfer pricing study, but still there is a lot of room over there and the taxes are computed based on the net income as opposed to the gross income. And the money can be sent to India either as the subcontractor service or as a part of profit distribution. Wonderful. Okay, so my next question as you touched upon earlier was having a registered agent in a state. Now this question is very pertinent. Assume that I was, I lived in US for X number of years and I, I have an, a social security number but or, or um, uh, or I was here on a student visa, but now I live in, in India. My question is, can I use my social security number to open up a company here? Well, it depends. Let's say, uh, the, it depends on situation to situation. Let's say if you were a green card holder or a US citizen, and now you are not living in this country, you are living in India. Your social security number is still valid, more than likely. A US citizen has the right to live anywhere they want and their citizenship, their social security number is still remains valid forever. But for students, uh, a lot of time the social security number is deactivated. Then it's not active anymore. So we can try to use your social security number 
to start the business. And if it's still active, it will go through. Okay. Now, here's a question that I have for you, uh, AJ Kumar, and then Navidji after that. A little while ago, you mentioned domestic partner. If um, the foreign national decide to have a domestic partner in the USA, what kind of legal status that domestic partner need to have? Well, the domestic partner has to have some sort of residence status over here. So what we are looking for is a valid social security number. You can be on green card, you can be on citizenship. If you have H1, then you can be the silent partner. You cannot be an active partner. Please remember, and you have to check with the immigration, the H1 is offered for certain type of activities. Your H1 is offered for a job that you do. H1 does not allow you to be self-employed over here you have the right to invest into any security, any business you want, but H1 is not a license to be self-employed in this country. Okay. Well, years ago, there was a thing that I had heard that if foreign nationals want to do business here, uh, and if domestic partner is US citizen, they need to have 51% of ownership stake uh, versus the foreign national company, they can have 49%, but because they are foreign nationals, they don't have, let's say, green card or SS number or anything, they can be majority partner. Is it still true? No, it's not true, Sanjeevji. Uh, it's a misconception that you have to have a certain percentage ownership. You can have a company in US, and we want to highlight, we want to emphasize this fact for our foreign viewers. You can have a company in US without having any partners. You can have a company in US when the 100% of the ownership is owned by a foreign company, your company in India, or you individual. You can have multiple partners if you choose to. You do not have to have any partner. You do not have to have a local partner. The scrutiny is slightly higher. It takes longer, slightly more expensive to manage the business, but it's allowed. Okay. And then one question for you, Mr. Patrick, is that when you basically, they contact you first, uh, you know, if they want to open a business and, uh, and you start guiding them and you have assisted over a thousand companies to open their businesses in all over the 50 states here in USA. And uh, we're not talking about foreign nationals only from India, also different countries, more than 10 countries. So you've done a, you know, a phenomenal work here, giving this foreign nationals an opportunity to start a business here. But my question to you is that when you, when they contact you, how far you go along with them, meaning how long you hold their hand, um, you know, going forward in the future after the company is formed? Very, very good question. Actually, it all depends on the goal and the vision that they have. So we look at, at a whole wider perspective of how do they see themselves growing three years from today, for example, mm -hmm. or three years from, or five years from today. Right. So based on that, we structure them up. Uh, you know, what will, what will happen after three years? Why three years? Because L1A, they say they want to work for their company, but as Ajay said that, you cannot work for your company here in US right. if, if you don't have a social security number or mm. if you're not a resident here. Mm. So what happens is that if their company does good, and that's what I ask them as their, what their vision is, so that after three years, after they have established a good, uh, you know, a base here, that they have a good growth here, I'm not talking about profit, but they're generating enough revenue, then they come here on L1A visa, and that through that category, they get a green card. Now that is the possibility I want to create that, that we together look into Correct. creating for these companies. That's what I wanted to know. So you basically stay with them till everything is all working out very well, three years or five years. Absolutely. It's just not like, you know, you open the door, you show the other door and say goodbye. It's not like that. <laughs> Company formation is a one part, but very important part. Very, exactly. Because that's a foundation yes. that you have to build on. But on that foundation stand that I want to have a warehouse. Mm. They want found, I want to sell, I want to have e-commerce on Amazon, on various platforms or I want to have a sales facilitation. But everything will boil down to what structure you have, how do you manage your income, how do you manage your profits, and that's where the structure of an organization plays a very, very vital role. Okay, so having discussed this very, um, you know, introductory and informative part of the foreign national starting business here in USA with, uh, with both of you, Mr. A.J. Kumar and Mr. Patek, my suggestion is that there's a lot more to discuss. So, you know, why don't we just keep uh, other information for the second episode in a continuation of this episode. So part two uh, of this uh, subject episode, we're going to have a lot more information regarding these foreign national once they have set up their businesses, what are their responsibilities, what are their liabilities to follow, and how far Mr. A.J. Kumar as well as Mr. Naveen Patak also stays with them to make sure that everything is done as per U.S. laws. Uh, meantime, I'd like to thank Mr. Patak for being here in our show. Thank you so much. And Mr. A.J. Kumar as well.
as always. Thank Absolutely. you. Remember, any question you have, text talk at itvgold.com. And for your personal or corporate tax returns, any tax related matter, we are like in the high of the high time of the tax season. Do contact Science CPS Services, visit their website, or give them a call at 908-380-6876. I am Sanjeev Pandya, wishing you all happy and tax-free days ahead. See you next time, same place, same time. So long. Thank you.